everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to be talking about bone uh, and we're going to do a fairly complex process for bone I know this is hobby cheating but what I've done here is you can see we've already got a little bit of a start so this has just been painted you know a sort of bone color it's a mix of a bone I like and it's been shaded with our seraphim sepia now some people will just stop here and if you want to stop here and you think this looks fine then one you didn't need my video to tell you that and two uh, you're going to get the look of like an old, very dirty bone or something like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to take this up to the next level, okay? And that's what this hobby cheating is going to be about. I'm going to take you through a lot of steps. M my recommendation is you don't need to do every one of them, okay? Find the steps in here that you like and go from there. So uh, let's talk about what we're using first off. Okay. So first off, we've got some various shades and inks. We've got our Seraphim Sepia, Classic already used it once, we're gonna use it more. We've got our Agrax Earthshade, everybody's favorite liquid talent. We've got some Game Ink Sepia. Um, we've also got, so that's our sort of low colors. Now let's talk about some higher lights. We've got our Scale Color Nakar. Don't ask me, I don't know. It's just sort of a white gray. Um, you can use any kind of thing like this. Um, we've got. Vallejo Model Air White Gray. Um, if you look at the two of them, sorry, there you go, you can see a slight difference there. This one's a little whiter. And then finally, we've got uh, some scale color white, just white. So we got three ups and three downs, and that's what we're going to use to create our full spread on this. Um, I'm doing this as part of a competition piece, so I'm going to do the whole distance. Uh, my advice to you is, like I said, check out the steps I do, well, uh, look at the techniques figure out what you like from it, and go from there. So to start, as I said, we already shaded it. Now the problem with just shading overall, just throwing a wash on, is that this doesn't really heed shadows. If you think about how you highlight, like if you look at the color underneath here, the green that I've already shaded, you can see how it's darker up here underneath, and you know lighter down here at the bottom because I've highlighted it already, right? Same with this up here along this ridge. There's a darkness underneath and it's light along the ridge, okay? So the issue is when you just wash everything, it just coats everything e evenly, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna correct that, okay? We're going to try to get some shadows down in areas like this under here on the bottom side of this horn, that kind of thing, where up under this ridge, you know, these kind of places where it would naturally stop the light. Now, this is a more time-consuming process, but like I said, this is we're going to take you all the way through it. So, uh, let's just do a quick, easy example. I'm not going to do the whole thing for you here because it is kind of time-consuming, but I'm going to start out with my sepia ink. And I'm going to put a little out here, and I'm going to water it down some. So I'm just going to take some sepia ink, and I'm just going to water it down just a little. Okay? And the idea is, do the old back of the thumb test, of course, it's good. All right, so the idea here is, of course, that I want to be taking this sepia ink up into these recesses, okay? Up in these places where I want to create those shadows, right? So you can see there, what I'm doing is just broadening out these shadows. Now at the moment, like if we had the bottom of the horn here that would be cast in shadow, what we're gonna do is just get some ink down there, okay? It's not making a huge difference right away. We're gonna get like the bottom of all the skulls, that kind of thing, all right? All the lower recesses and ridges and things like that, we're gonna go in and drag that into. So we're gonna make this much more pronounced. Now, this first one's gonna be fairly stark, but I'll go ahead and do that on everything and then we'll come back and you'll see how it looks, okay? All right, back in a minute. All right, so we've went ahead and applied the sepia all over and you can see what we've got now is a nice, we've really built up our, our lower tones here, right? I ended up using a little thinner medium as well to really smooth it out. Um, you don't have to, but if you're following me with your hobby cheating, hopefully you've picked up your Vallejo Thinner Medium by now. 
it's a very, very, very useful thing. And uh, yeah, I cannot recommend it enough. So now we're gonna move in to our Agrax. And here's how we're gonna actually use our Agrax. We're gonna go more or less straight from the pot on this because it's fairly thin. But what we're gonna do is we're still gonna make sure the brush is kind of wet because I do wanna, we're gonna water it just some. We're gonna kind of smooth out here some of this, okay? And we're gonna mainly focus this into the deepest recesses because Agrax, when it collects, really gets very dark. It's, it's quite black, but it's thin overall. So what we're trying to do is mainly just smooth out between the sepia and the uh, and, and, and the, the sepia ink, the sepia seraphim sepia and the ink. Because this is just going to give us a little more of a rough tone, a little more darkness. Again, we're focusing this, this isn't a general wash. We're focusing this down on the lower portions of the skulls, right? So down where, where the light would not be hitting them, where we want to create shadows. It's going to take that darker part, darken it right up. Basically, we're just trying to smooth over our lines. Okay? Um, but we make sure if anything at all pools, or if there's any recess, that it's focused into these lower parts. Okay? And we're just going to go around real quick. I'm going to go ahead and do this because this should dry pretty quick. I'm being thin about this. It's not a big, heavy wash. We're just kind of getting these areas... Again, the goal is to just make sure that those lower parts, we're really pushing our shadows here. Okay, we wanna go, we're, we're going for a very, very heavy contrast. This is one of those steps that I think if you didn't wanna do, you wouldn't have to. By the way, let's say you're at home and you say to me, but Vince, I don't have any, like uh, most people watching this probably have or own like the um, the Citadel shades. But let's say you don't have the, uh, the ink. You don't have any Vallejo CP ink. Well, first off, you should get some. You should get the, the Vallejo ink set because it's very useful. But if you don't do that, um, that's okay. See if you can get maybe some Army Painter Strong Tone or Medium Tone. That would also work, both of those. You can you can play with those if you like the Army Painter set. I think they're quite good. Um, you, could just, uh, you could just do more applications of Seraphim Sepia. That's another option. Um, you could take a sort of very brown paint and mix it very sepia colored paint and mix it way down into you know sort of a glaze put a lot of medium into it to turn it into this you're not going to get exactly the same effect but all of those are alternatives in case that you don't have that so now we've gotten our shadows way down there now if i wanted to, and you can see there like right in here you can see how dark that is versus that this creates our depth so when i hold this up let's see if i can get it at the right angle here right? That creates our darkness. Okay? But now we need to call out our light. And that's the difference. Most people, you when you wash and you just highlight, what happens is you don't get the accurate low lights in place. Okay? That's one of the big differences. Um, skulls are really nice because they have, like all skeletons, there's a map of exactly where you need to do it. It's got these nice ridges. You can easily trace it. You know where you're going. So with that out of the way, that's going to take us to our next step, which is to, uh, which is to start doing our highlights. So, as I said, I did this originally in a bone color, but I'm not going to start there. Okay, I'm going to start with a little of the this Nakar. I don't know what that name is, but again, if you don't have this, just use some kind of like white gray color. Um, you could use, say, you could just skip, say, directly to the Vallejo Model Air White Gray. Or you could go to, um, you could just mix a little, little, a little bit of gray into a bone or, or a ivory or something like that. All of those would be fine and, and possible. Um, I'll, I'll do a full review of these Scale 75 paints at some point in the future. Maybe very soon. Um, okay, so we're going to take that in a car and we want to thin it way out. So we're gonna use a nice little mix of sort of water and retardant medium and stuff like that because we do not want this thick. We want this pretty thin, 
okay? Um, so we're gonna get our brush nice and wet. We're gonna get a lot of the medium on there and we're gonna really thin this out. So you can see on the back of my thumb there, like I'll drag that over there. You can see how thin that is. That's where we want it. Now what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna, you know, trace the highlights, more or less. But we're gonna be very gentle about it. Now one of the advantages to these scale 75 paints, and then I have some retardant medium mixed in too, is that it dries very slowly. So when I put it on there, I can still push the paint around. If I don't like where it's going, I can really push it around. So you can see what I'm doing here is basically just picking out those sections where I want it to get lighter and, you know, making it go lighter. I mean, that's really all there is to it. Now, I'm not re-highlighting over everything. I'm not covering up any of it. Like, I'm hitting the, the points that we hit with some of the sepia at some point, but I'm not really focusing on that. Because our final step is going to be to bring it all together with our original midtone, but we're not going to layer directly up from that or anything like that. Instead, we're going to get our highs, we're going to, we're going to get our lows, then we're going to get our highs, and then we're going to bring everything back together. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this because this is very thin. It's going to take me a little while. Okay? But I'm just going to keep building this up. As you can see, I'm doing here, like these little teeth need to be picked out, right? So I just run down there a little bit and you can see how, how that's working. I want to get the top of the skull, the top of both of the horns, the top of the little individual skulls. So I'm just going to work all that out. I'm going to keep working in with the Nakar, uh, or, you know, my white gray equivalent, and then we'll go from there and we'll pick up in just a moment. All right, so we're all highlighted up here with our first step. So you can see we've used the Nakar there, and we've gotten, now we're starting to get some good contrast. And that's the name of the game, right? That contrast, creating that tonal variation in the bone. So we're going to go ahead and keep stepping up. We're going to start with our white gray, which is a little bit brighter. And then we're going to mix in some of our straight white. And we're going to use that very sparingly. Now, in both cases here, I'm going to be fairly thin with my application of this. Okay, I don't want a lot of this on here. And we're just touching smaller and smaller areas the whole time. So we need to think about like, what are our actual highlights? Where would the light be gathering? So it'd be like the top of this skull, these little weird ridges, the very top of the bone here, you know, that kind of stuff. And we're just hitting these very highlights because really this, this step, what we're doing right here with this white gray, this is gonna be our final like real highlight with this. And we're being very thin We'll do a couple coats of this to get it good, and each time we'll touch less and less of the model, right? Because what we want is we want to build this color up very slowly, as opposed to using, you know, we're, we're not really glazing, but we're doing it a little thinner than layering here. We're just somewhere in the middle. We want it to be in a sort of multiple coats area, but not, not an overwhelming number. Because, and it's also going to dry not as white as when you first put it on. That's one of the interesting things about white is it tends to it tends to dry a little duller than when you first put it on. So you kind of have to have a concept of just how uh, of just how thick you're applying it. One thing that I'll say is that the key when you're working in anything like this is color saturation, right? You just need to keep doing it over and over again. Uh, so the number one secret to all miniature painting is if you do it once and it looks good and you want it to look great, do the exact same series of steps three more times. Like that's really the secret. Um, like I noticed that cut there on the side of the tooth is a little too hard right there. So I'll go in and I'll kind of smooth that out. Okay. So um, you can see how that's coming out there. So we're getting better. Now, I'm going to do all the rest of the skulls, but rather than, rather than wait and cut again, what I'll do is I'll go straight to the white. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the pure white. 
I'm going to mix that just with a touch of the white gray because I want mostly white here, but I don't want it to be 100% pure white. Okay. And what I'm going to do is now I'm just going to hit the very corners where I want to create my points of light. Okay. What we're doing here is literally making the light points that are sort of absolutely catching the hardest light. All of painting is just a study in light, let me say that. Okay? And so this is absolutely that. Because what we're doing here is getting our very strongest points out. We're not looking to cover a lot with this, to touch very much with this, right? We're just getting those little final points that really make it pop and come forward. Okay? All right. So now what I'm going to do is, as I just said, I'm going to repeat all of that. And then when I come back, we're going to kind of bring it all together. We're going to smooth it out a little bit using our original base tone. And we'll see how, see where we end up at there. All right, we'll be back in. All right, so we've got all our highlights placed. We've got some good contrast now. You can see we've got our high and our low lights established. But then what we need to smooth everything out. So for that, I've returned to a mix more or less like my original color. Um, so it's... Uh, sort of a mix of a uh, ivory and a um, uh, and a white gray. And what I'm going to do now, and I've thinned it way down to a glaze. Okay, so it's probably two drops of paint to three drops of water, or four drops of water, two drops of thinner medium, two drops of glaze medium. So there you go. If you want another recipe. And what I'm doing is now kind of smoothing out in between the lows and the highs and what I'm going to do is just go over everything not well not everything I'm not getting down to the lowest low points I'm not covering over our highest highlights okay the goal is to just apply this glaze a few times especially on the lines right so where everything comes together here evening out all of our transitions. So like there you can see on the ridge of the bone where that's very stark. I'm just gonna run that glaze over. Same on this side. You can see that hard line. I'm just gonna run that glaze over. If you get a little too much like I did there, you can always just take your brush, an extra brush you got, run it along the deep part, wipe it off. No big deal. Done and done. That's the great part about when you take something down to a glaze. Again, dries very slowly, much like the shade colors, because they're really just very thin paint with a lot of medium. It gets easier. So we take this in, and we're just going to go around, and we're going to smooth everything out. And that's the goal here. I'm going to take all our blends, and we're going to make them nice and smooth. All right, so I'm going to do that over the model. Back. Okay, so we're back, and you can see we applied a couple layers of the glaze, and we've smoothed everything out. So now we've got some nice, smooth blends. But uh, we want to smooth out the lower transitions, too. So I took a little bit of the sepia, mixed it with some thinner, and now we're just going to add some of that color back in. And I know it sounds like I'm crazy here. Okay, because I'm going back and forth and back and forth. And really, that's the key in a lot of ways to keep doing this sort of back and forth thing. Um, it doesn't take a huge amount of time, depending on, the, depending on the size of the thing. By the way, I'm also painting the Gorgon himself off to the side. In between these, he's just way too big to fit in the camera, so it is taking me a little longer. Um, but cause this guy is running... He's got so many skulls. How does he have so many skulls? It's crazy. Anyways, so we've got a little thin stuff here, and this is just going to be used to further just smooth everything out, right? Because it's the thin medium, it's very, very transparent, and we're really just using it to just very slightly get in there and get the last bits of the color we want probably not even showing up on camera but basically we're gonna you run this glaze oops 
we run this over a couple places we want to make sure stay just a little bit in shadow just ties everything together okay so we can do that a few times and then there you go that's your uh that's your full painting of bone now i'm gonna do one more step here uh it's not necessary it's just something kind of interesting you can do if you want an unusual uh, sort of thing with your bone. I'm gonna throw it in as just sort of a bonus that I'm doing on this one because of what this model is and what I'm trying to achieve with it. So the other thing you can do with your bone is I did this all in sort of whites and browns and stuff like that. So there's really no color in it, right? That is to say in the traditional sense of the word. However, that doesn't have to be the case. You can work color into bone. People can work reds in, all sorts of things. There's lots of interesting colors you can work in there. In this case, we're gonna use a color that I used in the skin tone of the larger Gorgon, just to kind of bring that together. And that's this scale 75 calamari orange. Uh, I don't know what color in other ranges I would recommend you do. I suppose you could do this with like a very deep ruddy orange. You could take like some other orange and mix it with a little bit of red or something. Okay, I'm gonna take some of that and I'm gonna thin this way down. Like we are taking this all the way down. Okay. Like we are taking this down to glaze levels because this needs to be extremely subtle when it goes on this model. This can't be overwhelming. This has to be like the lightest tint of this color is what we are trying to add here. Okay. All right, let's see if I've got it thin enough there. Yeah, there you go. How thin? That thin. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little of this orange and I'm just gonna kind of work it up here onto this edge line in between the shadows. I'm very specifically targeting the area in between where the sepia and the regular bone is. Just very, very light touches. You definitely do not want to go overboard with this kind of a step. Same with the red. You could use you could use a more red or a crimson or something. That would all be fine. Again, you don't want this to pool and it's very thin, so you've got to be pretty careful with it. Because really what we're trying to do here is just inject a little bit of interesting color into this. It's shocking sometimes how the littlest things can just bring something to life. The problem with the orange and brown is that in the end it's fairly neutral and flat. The reason we paint in color and not monochrome is because color is what makes things interesting. It's what makes things pop. And when you're using, when you're painting stuff that has no color to it in the standard sense, like if you think of a color wheel, Brown and white aren't on it, okay? Those aren't colors in that sense of the word. Um, and the, so the problem with that is that it tends to be visually kind of boring, right? But if we just mix in, glaze in a little of that orange, you can see now what we get is that. And look how much more alive that bone looks with just that tiniest little step. If you go overboard, you can always smooth it back out, right? But a little thing like that can really take your bone up to the next level. So there you go. As I said, you can apply or skip these steps as you feel necessary. Obviously, this is a, the, the lengthiest way possible to do bone, but I really enjoy it. Uh, I hope you enjoy too. And as always, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.